There's a bone to break, he'll break it. There's a knee to graze, he'll graze it. If there's an ankle to sprain, he'll sprain it. He's the unluckiest kid. Oh, another accident. He really is unlucky. If you cut your skin, lots of tiny blood vessels tear and bleed. But straight to the rescue are an army of platelets. They stick together like glue. This is called clotting, and it makes a plug to stop the bleeding. Then a protein called fibrin holds everything together with fibres, a bit like scaffolding. The clot dries out and goes hard, forming a scab to keep bacteria out like a bouncer. Sorry, mate, you're not on the list. Mm. New skin cells start to gather. Meanwhile, the heavyweights, infection-fighting white blood cells, constantly patrol the area fighting infection. Your new skin starts connecting to your nervous system and it gets all itchy because your skin knows there's something there you need to get rid of. But don't pick it. Wait for your scab to fall off. Chris, I cannot wait any longer. I am bursting to know what's happening at A&E. Aren't you? Yes. Well, let's head back there then. Right, go on, let's go! Waiting with her mum in Sheffield Children's Emergency Department is five-year-old Megan with a nasty knock on her noggin. Gross alert coming up. I'm waiting to see the doctor. Well, let's find out what happened. It was a beautiful sunny day and Megan was outside a pub garden walking along a wall like a black cat ready to pounce. Meow! Um, I guess so. Or a tightrope walker at the circus. Um, wibbly wobbly. Now you're getting carried away, Zant. Megan was walking along a low wall. OK. When she got to the end of the wall, she walked down some steps. But as she turned round to go back up, she tripped and fell head first, banging her head. Ouch! And it was bleeding. Here to check out that banged bonce is Dr Robert Eastman. When anyone's had a head injury, it's important to assess the nerves coming out of the brain to make sure that they've not been affected. So, Dr Robert first checks the nerves that control Megan's eye movement. And then all the way down, had a look in her ears, had a look in her nose. That's to make sure that if someone falls over that they've not injured anything inside the nose. Megan passes Dr Robert's tests with flying colours. Now it's time to inspect the wound. I feel down your head here, does that feel OK? Yeah, just look up for me. Uh, what's going on here? Keep your eye on Megan's wandering fingers. Busted! So I was just pressing with my hands to make sure the skin would go back together so we can steri-strip the wounds and that'll close it up nicely. Megan heads off to get those steri-strips stuck on. But there's something worrying her. It's only going to be cold water. It's not cold water that's troubling Megan, Mum. You don't want my socks on. You don't want your socks on? Is that going to affect your head? <laughs> Everyone knows wearing socks affects your head, Mum. Right, I'm going to start with the bit where it's not cut. We'll get all this blood That's off. Still. With those steri strips stuck on, the skin on Megan's head will start to heal straight away. She'll be back to normal in no time. And her socks are back on. So, Megan, what have you learned today? I've learned to be more careful. Hopefully. <laughs> Fingers crossed. Bye. 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 We're hitting part of the hospital that you haven't seen before. Today, we're in the Burns Aftercare Clinic. On Operation Ouch, we've seen our fair share of burns, scrapes, cuts and all sorts of gory bits. But what happens afterwards? All those injuries start to heal and often they form scars on your skin. Look at this. Last week, I accidentally burnt my arm on the cooker. Now, your body's really good at repairing itself and this has already started to heal. But if it had been a more serious burn, that could leave a scar, and that would require careful treatment. When you injure yourself, the body heals the wound with scar tissue. This looks and feels quite different to normal skin. It's not as strong or flexible, and the bigger and deeper the injury, the bigger the scar. I'm on duty with scar and burn specialist Kevin Ryan to check up on some of the patients he's treating. First in is Holly, who took a bit of a tumble five months ago. If you're squeamish, get ready to look away. So, Holly, what happened? Why are you here? There was a tree stump on a hill and I fell over it. So, can I see what happened? That's one month later and the skin's already starting to heal, but there's a lot of this pus and infection there. And then this is now five months later and you can see 
it's all healed and there's a bit of scar, but that's going to keep getting better and better, isn't it? Holly is being fitted with a special stocking that will help the scar continue to improve. Because Holly's wound took a long time to heal, the scar is more severe, if you like. Yes. And so by, by making a little stocking that presses on that, it'll get a flatter, nicer result. Is yeah, that right? That's what we're hoping for. Next in is Jensen, having a checkup on a burn he got over four weeks ago. Jensen, can you tell us the story of how this happened? The pie dropped on my leg. You dropped a pie on your leg? <laughs> what type of pie was it? Cheese and onion. Cheese and onion pie. What would have concerned us would have been had he had any raised lumpy scarring that would have contracted and pulled in, but it isn't. That's beautifully soft, nice and soft and supple, so that shouldn't cause him any problems at all. In terms of the pinkness, that would be there for several weeks, if not several months, but it will fade eventually. So if I press on it, yep. I can make the pinkness go away yes. and then that, that's the blood flowing back. Exactly. But those blood vessels aren't quite normal, are they? That's no, part not. of the healing that's process. That's right, it is. They're very fragile at the moment, they are. But they do, they do improve, it just takes time, just takes several months for that to resolve. Ben had an accident five months ago. Stand by, because this isn't for the faint-hearted. And unfortunately, his burn injury got infected. To help it heal fully, the doctors took a patch of skin from his thigh to cover the injured part of his foot. This is called a skin graft. So what happened? Why are you in Burns Clinic today? I was making mum and dad a coffee. I had um, a music player with me that I carried downstairs and put on the side while I was waiting for the kettle to boil. And because I had no pockets, I'd, I just thought of a quick way to, to carry it upstairs and I just put it under my chin. How were you holding it all? Uh, I was holding it like that. And then what happened? So I was like looking down and I just wanted to lift my head up to see where I was going. So you dropped the music player and spilled hot coffee all over your foot? Yeah. Oh, dear. But for Ben, the question now is whether he can go swimming again. Should we have Let's a look at that? Yeah. And we'll give you your answer? Yeah. Fantastic. That's great. Oh. That's beautifully soft. I can't feel any signs of thickening there. That's just what we want. Um, it's now fully healed. I thought this was going to look much more serious. Yeah. You know yeah. what I mean? That's yeah. it's such a good result. In terms of swimming, I think yes, no problem. Brilliant. That's brilliant news, brilliant news. Although the scars may not ever go away fully, thanks to these treatments, it means that life can get back to normal for these three. Swimming for Ben, gymnastics for Holly, and cold pies only for Jensen. Chris, I wonder how our patient in the emergency department is getting on. Well, you're in luck, aren't? Because this is the bit we get to find out. Ooh, it's one of my favourite bits. Earlier, we met Sophie with her cut thumb in A&E. Sophie was in her bedroom doing some arts and crafts when she cut her hand on a sharp knife. Ouch! Because this may have affected the movement of her hand, she's here to see a specialist doctor. Examining the dodgy digit this morning is Dr Helen Richards. I believe you've had a little accident. Is it very sore? Worst case scenario, what we'd be looking for is whether she's damaged one of the tendons. There's also a possibility of her injuring one of the nerves. And that could mean she needs an operation. Dr Helen checks how Sophie's thumb is moving today. Right, can you wriggle this little thumb? You can! <sighs> now that it's not so sore, it's much better than yesterday. So you could move her thumb fully, so that means her tendon's intact. She's not injured any tendons in there, so we don't need to do an operation. Brilliant. Phew, that's good news. And looking at the scratch, it only looks quite superficial. And Sophie gets a brand new bandage. You'll be glad to know we don't need to see you back here again. You're all better. Great. Bye, Sophie. <laughs> Bye, Tab. Let's go back to accident and emergency to see what happened to our next patient. You are not going to believe this one. Why not? Did you make it up? What? No, it's just a figure of speech. It's an expression. OK. This is five-year-old Tiana with her mum and a poorly foot. And check out this handsome doctor. Hmm. Now, which foot did you hurt? Was it this one? No, this one. Oh, silly old Dr Chris, eh? So how did you hurt it? When my mum was riding the bike and my foot got caught in the wheel. Wow, that does sound very careless of your mum. Naughty mum. Let's look at this in detail. It was a gorgeous sunny day, so Tiana and her mum were out for a bike ride. Well, sounds lovely. Tiana had the best view from the back seat, whilst Mum was doing all the pedalling at the front. Even better! But it all went wrong as they got to a roundabout. Oh, no! Did she do the same as you the other week? 
Um, you know, when the pigeon pooped on your head and you got in such a flap you ended up face first in a fountain? No, Zond. And you promised never to tell anyone. Oops. Anyway, Tiana's foot fell down off the seat and it got caught in the spokes of the wheel. Ouch! OK, Mum's off the hook, but that bike has a lot to answer for. First up, Tiana heads to X-Ray to be checked for broken bones. Finished. Wow, that was speedy. While Tiana has a quick pit stop, here comes Dr. Rob Maguire to assess the damage. All the bones seem clear. There was nothing, you know, obvious to see on the X-ray. Excellent. The bones are intact, but it's still hurting, isn't it, Tiana? My foot is really sore. So it might take, you know, a week or so for her to get back to normality. The wound gets a good clean and a plaster. But amazingly, the best treatment here is to let your body fix itself. <laughs> Your skin has a whole battle plan worked out. Sticky blood cells called platelets rush to the wound and clump together to stop the bleeding. Then a protein called fibrin holds everything together with fibres like scaffolding and it goes hard to form a scab. Underneath, new skin cells are made, pushing off the scab and you're as good as new. So, what have we learned here, Chris? Be careful next time you're on the bike, Mum. I will. <laughs> Can you give me five? Bye, Bye Tiana. Tiana.